We're talking about the Aspire program, a mentoring program designed to meet the needs of UNCP students experiencing homelessness. We'll learn about why and how this program got started and what we can do to continue to support its mission. It's Campus to Community. Thanks for tuning in to Campus to Community. I'm Hannah Baggett Anderson, Lecturer of English and Literacy Commons Faculty Fellow. With us today, we have the Director of the Aspire Program, Dr. Tamara Savage, Assistant Professor of Social Work. As a social worker, she has worked with precariously housed adults and children in transitional housing, as well as adults and children in homeless shelters. Thanks for joining us today, Tamara. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you offering to have me here today. Yes, I think it's yeah. a super important program to be able to share not only um, with our viewers on campus, but also in the community. Thank you. Um, yes. So I think to start off, will you tell us exactly what is the Aspire program? Yes, the Aspire program uh, is a program for students who are experiencing homelessness here at UNCP. And so what we're providing now is mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Uh, and we're also providing help with uh, sometimes their bills, like their power bills, something like that that's outstanding. Um, things that would keep them from being housed because they, it's like a domino effect. If, they, if their car breaks down and they can't pay their bills, then they can't pay their rent. And so we try to help with that. We also provide like hygiene kits for them and uh, some snacks. And we meet uh, once a month uh, to, as a group to have dinner together. And we play games, we have game nights. Sometimes we watch movies together. Our end of the year celebration, I think we're gonna go bowling here. Yeah, I finally talked them into it. Yes, excellent. <laughs> I want to bowl. So, yeah, yeah. You know, convincing, you know, any student yeah. to go and do something, especially with adults, sometimes it's hard. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. So a lot of elements in this Aspire program, mm -hmm. not just necessarily providing housing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But all of the elements that go to supporting students in that situation. Yes, yes, and then even helping them with their financial aid process because mm -hmm. it's very complex. So it began whenever I, uh, this is my second year here, mm -hmm. and so the program began because I had a couple of students who came to me in the social work department and said, you know, we're homeless mm -hmm. and you know we have we have housing while we're in school but then there's the 10 days during the holidays the winter break and then there's summers and I knew that there are homeless students on ca college campuses I've known that um, and but to have students come to me in my department and talk about it was a you know sort of a transformational experience for me to listen to their stories and um, so we were able to connect through their stories and I myself when I was back in the 80s I was an independent student I was um, you know during the school years I was housed uh, but then the summer breaks and the winter breaks I wasn't so um, I have a personal experience with it but since then there's been more attention brought to it before when the 80s there wasn't McKinney Vento which is a policy that came about in 1987 to help students that were K through 12 Okay. Uh, that were homeless, experiencing homelessness, and uh, but there's nothing for higher education students mm -hmm. at this at the present time. So uh, talking to these students with my own experience, we got together and we decided we need to do something on campus. And there were already things happening on campus uh, that they told me about that were very helpful. Um, but what they told me, what was very important to them, there wasn't a centralized sort of system. You know, it was sort of different departments were doing different things, wonderful things. Mm -hmm. um, and so I decided since I'm new, I need to find out. And uh, I formed a homelessness, homelessness coalition with staff members here. And so um, staff members, Christy Poteet is a part of it, um, Cynthia Redfern, uh, Jose McKinney, uh, Derek Oxendine, Janelle Hancocks. And so we got together and also uh, Lindy uh, Horn at CAPS. Mm -hmm. And we talked about what is on campus and what do we need. Um, Jeff Fredericks, uh, then I was with the uh, Arts and Science. I was mm -hmm. under that. Uh, College of Arts and Sciences, now I'm uh, under the College of Health Sciences. But at that time, he was very, he was very supportive. I went to him and told him our ideas. Um, he took a proposal to the provost who was very supportive. And through that, I was able to secure a grant with the Social Belonging uh, grant here on campus through Dr. Sherry Edwards. And then I was also able to um, 
I got support from uh, Dr. Frederick for the food, the dinners we have every month. Um, so since then, that's, that's how we started. Uh, and so what I do now is I coordinate all the services on campus, the Care Resource Center, they are, they're very helpful with what we're doing. Uh, you know, Janelle Hancox is very helpful in uh, financial aid to help us out with the students because um, it is a complicated process to get their financial aid forms filled Absolutely. out. And then they have to have verification that they are indeed homeless and they, they're still homeless. And so the CAPS helps us, Lindy Horn helps us with that. So we kind of all come together with this. Mm -hmm. And I'm the, like the central you know, coordinator of it all, basically. Right. Yeah. Gosh, so many moving pieces. Yes. Um, it's, you know, it's almost a little bit overwhelming to process about all these great things mm -hmm. that you do, but how great is it that it is centralized? Because like right. you say, we have so many resources and I know, mm -hmm. you know, even in freshman seminar courses mm -hmm. and things like that, we're encouraged to point students to all of these different right. resources. Yeah. But how are you gonna do that if you have no place, you know, to live? Right. Yes. Um, yes. Where do you even start? So, yeah, it's good to know that you are the you know the central organizer director of this yes. program, <laughs> and um, bringing together all these different people across campus. Because even when you're listing the people in mm -hmm. your coalition, those are some big names around here. They are. Yeah. Um, so I love being able uh, to hear about how yeah. everyone's speaking. And you mentioned um, Jose McKinney, and yes. he is a resident director that's right, right. yes um, housing. so what does it mean then to be working with someone like him like what is his role in this yes well during the meetings mm -hmm. uh, especially last year when we were planning just having his own experience because mm -hmm. uh, he was a student here right. and to hear what his experience is was a, as a student from that perspective was really important um, because he was the only student vo former student voice you know uh -huh. that was in the room and uh, luckily housing they've been working with students that are homeless for years mm -hmm. and they sort of are able to you know find help a person fill a need when there is a need right you right know, to help a person and he's been a part of that Cynthia Redfern you know she's been here a very long time and so they're just very compassionate people and so it's a place that you know fortunately I haven't had to go to them uh -huh. with the students that I have yet because everyone's had a place over the winter break and um, over the summer they promised me to have a place yeah <laughs> otherwise we would be talking you know and that we would you know the three of us would be figuring out something I'm sure uh -huh. but at this point I haven't had to do that um, thankfully yeah because everyone's yeah. on board same kind of values and goals and they are just wanting to help out those students that need it they yeah. are, and they were so welcoming to me because I was so new here. And you're right, these are big names on campus mm -hmm. and people that have been here a long time and doing fabulous things. And to sit down with them and they educated me about what was going on. And they also realized, yeah, we do, we've got a lot of stuff. I think Christy Poteet said this, we've mm -hmm. got a lot of things in place, but just kind of putting, putting them all together is what yeah. we need. And that was a big part of, of what I've done. But it's, it's just, yeah, there's always moving parts going. I'm, I'm texting and calling people and uh -huh. emailing, yeah. yeah. And, so I, you told us um, about how you had some particular students reach out to you yes. in social mm -hmm. work. Yeah. Um, what else do you know, or yeah, sure, what else do you know or the coalition mm -hmm. or what do we know mm -hmm. collectively about the homelessness experiences related to UNCP? Yeah, we don't know a lot yet because mm -hmm. homelessness in higher ed is just starting to be recognized. It's always been here, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but the students are invisible on most campuses. And so there hasn't been a lot of research into that area. There, uh, Goldrick Rabb, Sarah Goldrick Rabb from Temple has done some research with community colleges mm -hmm. and found that there's a really high rate of homelessness with college students. And, and her work is mainly on food insecurity and she stumbled upon the homelessness because they, they, they go together. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, and that's how, you know, uh, Christy Boteet would meet students that were homeless because they were hungry mm -hmm. and they would come and they would divulge after they had some trusting relationships about what was going on. Um, so there's not a lot of research at all on that. I know Christy did a, in 2016, she did a survey uh, with about 200, 220 students mm -hmm. and that were coming into the Care Resource Center, I believe. And she found about 2% said that they were housing insecure, unstable wow. housing at that point. And then she asked uh, another question she asked, have during at any time during the year, have you had, you know, trouble finding housing, unstable housing, insecure housing? And about 10% said yes mm -hmm. of, her, of her sample. And about eight or 9% said that in the summertime was the worst time that they were insecure with their housing. Right. So, and what I'm interested in is not only, you know, students who are homeless during the summertime and the, um, the winter breaks, but those who are precariously home 
homeless. Mm -hmm. Those are just on the, you know, the brink, right. right? And so that's really important to me too to kind of catch those students also. Mm -hmm. um, so we started out with a list of students from FAFSA, the, the Free Application for, fi for Financial Student Aid, mm -hmm. right? It's a long acronym. There we go. I never, go. I never hear it spoken, yes. hear the word, so it's nice to be reminded about what that yeah. stands for. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Keep no, going. you're fine. Yeah, it's a long, it's a mouthful. So, um, and Janelle Hanscox, she works with that. And so that's how we identify now homeless uh -huh. students that are, they're federally identified, so they're verified federally. There's a question that if you, if you are homeless, if you're an orphan, if you're a ward of the court, if you check yes, it takes you in a different direction oh, wow. on the FAFSA. And so we know who those students are. Now the problem with that is that FAFSA only catches those students who apply, you, you, know, you use the application, the FAFSA application, or they do it correctly, because it's hard. Once mm -hmm. you, you know, you could check the wrong thing or you could get very frustrated as you go trying to answer the questions. Yeah. Um, so it's the people that correctly complete it and the people, you know, that, that do it in the first place. So there are students who don't complete it and don't know about it and are homeless and I'm sure they're here on this campus and that's what we're realizing in higher ed. So now there's about 60,000 we think students that are that are homeless through FAFSA. That's what oh, we know. Wow. Okay. But we think it's maybe three times that, you know, or more because Incredible. it's very stigmatized also. There's a lot of social shame involved, um, a lot of stigma. The students are very isolated often because they don't have the same experience as the other students. They don't want people to know that they're struggling, that they're completely on their own. There's no safety net. Right. You know, they're completely on their own for everything. So if, you know, they run out of money, they run out of money mm -hmm. and then no one's, they're out. Yeah. Right. And, and there's so no fallback option there's no there. fallback at all. And they're surrounded by students who have some fallback. Mm -hmm. Right. And they don't want people to know that. And so they tend to isolate themselves. They tend to um, exclude themselves. And they also are excluded sometimes when they come out and tell people what's mm -hmm. going on with their lives. I've had students who said, I told my roommate and now she's weird around me. Oh, wow. Right, so I finally told my roommate, who I'm closest to, or my best friend, and now it's, he's weird around me. So it's 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 fascinating um, the experience that the students has. It's very different than other students on the campus. Yeah, and that's fascinating to me in in terms because I was thinking in my head as you were <clears throat> speaking mm -hmm. momentarily ago about stigma and mm -hmm. wanting to go into that more. Yeah. But even I'm wondering if you could speak to where you think that kind of reaction from someone like a close friend or a roommate comes from. Yeah. when someone shares their, you know, kind of economic and housing experience. Yeah, I think I think it comes from not knowing what to do. Right. You know, it's a little shocking to know, oh my goodness. I mean, even adults that I talk to, you know, I can't believe we have homeless students on campus. So you can imagine if you're 18 or 19 years old and your your best friend's telling you, you don't know what to do with that, right? right? It's just so much out of your realm of experience. Uh -huh. And so part of it is trying to you know, talking about it on campus, you know, trying to get the word out that this is happening, I think it will help with that. Then people will realize, oh, we do have students here mm -hmm. that are homeless and they're dealing with certain things and that sort of destigmatizes it when we kind of lift the veil yeah. a bit. Yeah. And that's part of what I'm hoping to do policy wise. Absolutely. Eventually. Because it's yeah, eventually, yeah. right? Because yeah. I think that no having people know that this is first a problem, mm -hmm. how they can help, but also knowing that that resource is available where all you have to do is right. ask, right. which, but that's one of the hardest parts, right? It's is very hard. Out. Yes, I, in fact, this, I was given a list of students from Janelle Hancock's when we started the program, and only half would get back with me. And I was offering wow. money through the social belonging grant. I said, I can pay you for mentoring, you know, yeah. you know hanging out with me and for coming to the, the dinners and for doing some social service, which is part of the grant mm -hmm. on campus, um, or, in, or right off of campus. And I just kept calling and emailing and calling and emailing and uh, finally people are starting to come around. I had a student come to my, my um, office last week. Uh -huh. She just walked in and she said, you're Dr. Savage, you're doing that Aspire thing, right? And I was like, yeah. And she said, well, you sent me an email about six months ago uh -huh. and I'd like to join. And I was like, wow. wow. And so we talked, I said, why, well, you know, I'm glad you're here, but what was going on for six months? And she was like, I was just really embarrassed mm -hmm. and I didn't want to talk to anyone about it. And she said, uh, and people leave. Right. So people have these nice programs, and I, you know, been a part of them growing up because she had been homeless, I think, since she was about 14. Oh wow! And okay. she, you know, gone through early college, very, you know, high-performing student. And she said people always leave, and oh. I just don't want another person to leave. And so that's one of the things I always talk to them about. You know, as long as I'm alive, I'm here for you guys. Yeah. I mean, even when you, you know, because retention is really important, right? Mm -hmm. And um, also graduation, but transitioning into your first job, into after college life, and you know 
I mean, quite frankly, you're part of a family here. Yeah. UNCP students, I mean, faculty, staff, and, and students. And so, um, I'm, as long as you want me to be around, I will. Yeah. And, uh, and for instance, one student was thinking about transferring, which I was supportive of what, her, what she was wanting to do. And she said, but will, you, will I lose you? Oh. And I said, no, you know, I don't, you go to another school, I'll still be here. She's gonna stay, she eventually yeah. decided <laughs> to stay. But, you know, that was a little bit, it kind of caught my heart a bit, because she was like, I, I, I don't want to lose you, uh -huh. you know, because this has been a great year. And I was like, you want, you know, there's email, there's, you know, we can write letters. Yeah. And she kind of laughed. Nobody writes letters at their age anymore. But, anyway. but, <laughs> but still, I'll send you cards. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so she was relieved from that. So yeah. that's what we have. We have students. Most of them, you know, have been homeless for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, they bounced around from couch to couch from family member to family member. A lot of them have been through traumatic experiences. I don't ask them to divulge anything. Mm -hmm. A lot of them do after time, which is, you know, again, is catches my heart a bit that yeah. they, you know, it's nice that they trust me, but they're, there's been a lot, they've lived a lot in a short amount of time, which I think is also a barrier with other students mm -hmm. because they have lived a lot. And a lot of the other students, they've had, you know, trials and tribulations, but these students have had, you know, students experiencing homelessness, so many barriers to get here, so many. And yeah. it's hard to imagine that. People are, it's hard to, to think about that. Yeah, just the context is just mm -hmm. so different. And I think being able to point that out for others to understand might even be helpful because mm -hmm. half the time it's just about being willing to listen and not, yes. and to respond rather than react, right? right? Um, exactly. Yeah. Gonna get, you know, language choice there, but. Exactly, yeah. But I just, I just, I'm even processing, mm -hmm. you know, cause I, I'm aware of this, this problem on camp mm -hmm. campus. I've had discussions with students that are, or have been formerly homeless mm -hmm. and still even hearing about how other people hear mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. I just think it's so important to have someone that's representative of the program that students know they can come talk to. Um, yeah. Because that is, yeah, I know I'm just echoing you, but that kind of barrier is so yeah. important to break through. Thank you. Yes, yeah. I think it is. I think that human connection is really what they're craving, you know, right. because many times they have been sort of tossed aside by society mm -hmm. and they don't feel connected. And so having a place where everything's okay, people have similar experiences, even if we're not talking about them, and we don't mm -hmm. usually. We just have, we just get together and, and we chat and we yeah. laugh and we watch movies or we, you know, have dinner together. And having that is like really um, new for them. Yeah, and to times. have a community of their mm -hmm. own, right? Yeah. Where people are coming from the same kind of background. Yeah. Where they don't have to be, live a double life yeah. in a sense, because many times that's what they've done. Mm -hmm. You know, they've told me my whole life I've tried to keep people from knowing, uh -huh. right? Because, you know, it's very important to hide it in some sense, of course, because of the stigma. And in this space with us, they don't have to hide it yeah. anymore. Yeah. Oh, really I'm nice. so encouraged by that just oh, because I, yeah. we, know, we know it's a problem, especially mm -hmm. here at UNCP. And you mentioned st some statistics yes. about the FAFSA. Right. Um, do you know of any other colleges that have programs similar to this? No, there are programs that do, there are other colleges that are doing different things, but nothing that's similar to what I'm doing. Uh -huh. And I, I, I actually was talking to some faculty recently and they're like, well, I was, you know, what are you doing? What's the model for your program? Uh -huh. I'm like, me and, and the it. homelessness <laughs> coalition. This is what because there's really nothing to model on. Right. I mean, there's mentoring, right? And, and and then I want to institute peer leadership and peer mentoring because they want to do it. They want to mentor the new students that come in next year. So it's we're just sort of building it as we go. So I'm taking parts of programs that I know are evidence based that are out there, with different working with different populations, mm -hmm. but not necessarily with this population. It's very new. Wow. We don't even have a data system. You know, there's there's talk about that a state data system or even a national data system. Them. Outside of FAFSA, there's nothing else. And so here we're starting that with, the, with these students, yeah. um, you know, trying to build a database of information. That's yeah. just incredible. I yeah. mean, I, th I think part of me was assuming that there had to be something else going on somewhere, right. but right, yeah. but I had never seen it. Yes. And I'm glad to know that that is true, you know? Yeah. It's, but wow, especially when mm -hmm. we're talking about at least 60,000, right? Yes, in the at United least, States, at yeah, least. At That's least. Just, yeah, and we think it's much more than that, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, Goodness. yeah, yeah. And then to shift 
just a little bit yeah. to hear about kind of where you're coming from. I know you mm -hmm. say this is your second year mm -hmm. at UNCP. We're yeah. so happy to have you. Thank you. I'm happy to be um, here. <laughs> but you also have had experience with populations similar to this. Right. Would mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yes. And so I worked um, in Charlotte with a homeless shelter. And uh, I was the children's social worker there. So I worked mm -hmm. with children that were, um, let's see, age four to 18. Yeah, and uh -huh. so we, and it was a living shelter, so we had 12 families that lived above us. Uh -huh. So we've worked downstairs and they live above us. And um, it was just, I worked there for a very long time. It was a, it was a wonderful experience. Uh -huh. um, and so I worked with kids that were, had been, you know, traumatized in many ways. Some of them had been on the streets since they were really young. Oh, wow. uh, children who had been physically abused and then they would run away and they would become homeless. Um, you know, parents who just would lose a job, you know, and could no longer, you know, they lost their, their housing, and mothers who left domestic violence situations mm -hmm. with their children. And so that was, um, it was really formative in my social work. Yeah, I yeah. bet. Becoming a social worker. It does, really that, does that kind of experience too, I know it supports your understanding of you're di directing this program, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that affects your teaching as well. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yes. I mean, my primary research interest is social exclusion, mm -hmm. right? Oh, and so wow. that's, okay. and stigma and social exclusion, and all this goes hand in hand because I saw these students, you know, when I was, these kids, when I was working at the homeless shelter in Charlotte, I saw how they were very stigmatized. Mm -hmm. They would lie about where they lived uh, because they, of course, didn't want anyone to know they were at a homeless shelter, right? Yeah. Um, and they would come tell me, you know, little second graders would say, you know, so-and-so found out I was homeless and they made fun of me all day. And so I was like, oh. oh, yeah. And so then I would go into the schools and talk to the class. The teachers okay. would let me come in and talk to the class about, you know, what it means, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's been my area. And mm -hmm. then I, at my dissertation, I sort of carried that on with that. Wow. So. Yeah. Just I like I like seeing the fact that you've had this entire history, you know, mm -hmm. leading up to this brand new programming, you mm -hmm. know, first of its mm -hmm. kind, really, in yeah. in a university system, right? I right. mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Western Carolina, they have I've talked to them. They've they've tried to do some some mentoring, mm -hmm. but it, you know, students is hard. It's hard to get them to come and stay. I mean, once they've come to me, they've stayed. Mm -hmm. I think Western Carolina had some difficulties with that, and. But yeah, there's not there's not a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Golder Grab, her study came out in 2017. Oh, okay. It was the first one. Oof. Yeah. So really new. Really We're new. We're really working. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Yeah. yeah, it's really new. I'm still just kind of <laughs> really having to think about that. Yeah. As much, maybe too, I think it's, especially in CCE, mm -hmm. we talk a lot about food insecurity like. and often about um, homelessness as well, mm -hmm. um, especially in the last couple of years, just yes. even just generally thinking about it right. as part of the programming. Um, so I, sometimes I just feel like, oh, we know, we know it's, this is happening, yeah. but, but no, yeah. you know, yeah. it's so much bigger than, than what it seems. It is. And I, you know, I've had students that just found out about me mm -hmm. through maybe they went to CAPS or to ca the care center and they've come to me and they weren't on my list. Uh -huh. Right. And so one student was living in a car. Right, oh, wow. and another student was, um, you know, about to be kicked out of her her house, right, because of rent, because it all, you know, started with, you know, something breaking down, you know, the domino mm -hmm. effect, yeah. and so now I think word's getting out a little bit because of, you know, the homeless coalition. They're they're yeah. telling students when they come, you know, go talk to Dr. Savage, and yeah. then we work together. Yeah, and, and it's nice sure. because yeah, in the community too, I've got mm -hmm. you know Paul and Beverly Brooks, community members. I think they work a lot with the football team. Um, they're very supportive and helpful through their church. Churches have been amazing mm -hmm. uh, to help out with this. Local churches, my church in um, in Harrells, North Carolina, has been very helpful. So people are coming together not only here but yeah. in the community as well. Yeah, lots of really support nice. all mm -hmm. around. There has been. Where do you see this program like going, or how do you mm -hmm. see it growing or changing? Yeah. Let's say in a year, in five years, 10 yeah. years, what are your goals? Yeah, so my goals are to implement peer mentoring because the students want to do that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I'll be able to continue with the social belonging grant to help them, give them some money for doing that. So the new Hope cohort that's coming in, we want to do a dorm uh, initiative. So we give, uh, you know, a big basket or a big trunk full of dorm supplies. Oh, great. That's really, they've told me that it's, you know, they didn't have it. They mm -hmm. didn't have a lot of supplies coming in. So I want to do that as like a welcoming gift. Um, have, you know, churches sponsor a student and, or, you know, faculty members and community members sponsor a student. So I can do that at the beginning of the year so that when they come in, they, they'll know this is a place you can go. Yeah. Um, also, I'm working on uh, helping the students get SNAP 
right, food stamps, the SNAP program, because mm -hmm. they're eligible for that. Uh, that's a process. They've just started telling me we'd like to do that, so yeah. next year we're going <laughs> to do that. So they're telling me things, you know, as we go along, which is, is, which is so nice. Uh, I'd also like to partner with Sodexo maybe, you know, with some uh, meal cards of some sort, mm -hmm. you know, meal points. Yeah. That seems to be a, an issue. Um, uh, the care center is wonderful because they have the fresh fruit now and the meat, which the students are really excited about. Um, and so there was, they, they didn't feel like going there. I asked them, do you guys go to the care center? And they're like, no, we don't go. And you know, one of the, the young ladies said, um, I've been to food banks all my life and I don't want to go again. And uh -huh. I, cause she, because it is stigmatized a lot yeah. of times, not here necessarily, because it's a wonderful place. Right. But um, so Christy's working with us on that so we can take a group together, you know, yeah. and they, want, they really want to do that. Like we want to go as a group. So yeah. They're really cohesive, which is wonderful to see happen over the year. Um, so peer mentoring, continue the mentoring. I want to bring in more mentors. Um, so I'm already doing that somewhat. I uh, bring in some staff members to mentor because I, I have eight students now. Oh, wow. And so okay. I can't do all. I'm getting yeah. to a point, I'm, and maybe I'll have, I'll have 16 if I double next year, which would be wonderful. Uh -huh. uh, but I'd love to have 30, 40, you know, as many students as we can get. Yeah, and as many wonderful. that need it, right? Exactly. I mean, because yeah. we have the resources. It's just about being able to support you in this programming mm -hmm. and in the coalition. Yeah. What is something that viewers, um, both on campus and in our community, could do mm -hmm. to support yeah. the Aspire program? So they could contact me, and we're always looking for school supplies. School supplies are, are a big deal with the students. Um, and uh, also, we have a donation. Uh, there's a link I'll have to get to yeah. <laughs> that they can donate through the university. Mm -hmm. So um, th that was set up, which is really nice. And that just helps me when emergencies happen. And I've had to do that you know, a couple of times this semester. Just mm -hmm. little emergencies come up, which could mean that they can't continue mm -hmm. and we're able to help with that. Um, also, uh, we're uh, always, you know, any kind of toiletries. I have room for that. I'm making room. The my <laughs> chair of my department's very nice. He's, he's like, you know, Tamara, give me little spaces to cram things, That's which good. is nice. Snack foods, uh -huh. they love that. Um, and just to have the dinners, it's just nice if they have, you know, anybody wants to contribute towards that. Dr. Frederick has done, he's been, you know, an angel this year with that mm -hmm. for me. Being able to well, so, so much that. that we can do, both yeah. like small donations, larger ones. Yeah. But I like hearing that just even the smallest donation of monetarily yeah. can, can keep students here and yeah. supported. Yeah. Because um, I, I see that too, those little emergencies are mm -hmm. ones that to can mm -hmm. totally just. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've had students, one, you know, called crying. It's like, you know, I, I need, I'm going to have to drop out. It was just yeah. a, you know, a small emergency we were able to help. And I was just, it felt so nice to be a part of that. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. it. Thank you. What is, um, as we kind of have to wrap up okay. now, what is one thing that you would like to leave our viewers with? One idea, concept, notion. Notion, to, yeah. to leave us with. Yes, I think just to know that we do have students who are really struggling and to just, you know, accept them yeah. for who they are, right? So I'm really talking to the students now about, you know, not leading a double life because that adds trauma, right? right? And they feel that weight on them. And so some of them are thinking, yeah, I can tell more people. And just to, to know that they're out there and, um, and just be accepting yes. yeah, and kind, right? Perfect. Perfect. So, well, thank you so thank much you. for talking with us today yeah. and thanks to our viewers who watch us on cable or who subscribe to our YouTube channel, WNCP TV. We've got a couple more episodes this semester. I hope you'll be on the lookout for Campus to Community.